Okay, thank you. I have the joy of being after lunch. Um, so I'm Stacey Croft. I'm an analytics manager from the strategy unit. Uh, I've been mainly focusing on simulation for the last few years. Um, as I've got the slot after lunch, what I'd like to do just before I start, let's check who's awake. If you've heard of system dynamics, could you stand up for me? Probably slightly a biased audience, given that you've come to a talk about learning about system dynamics. Great. If you, wait, stand up, stay stood up. If you've heard about system dynamics and you've actually used system dynamics, stay stood up. Okay, so a few less people. Okay, so those that have used system dynamics, have you ever created your own model? If you haven't, sit down. Okay, so we have our two experts in the room. Brilliant, thank you, you can sit down. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our journey, but first of all, because I don't think we've got an audience that knows all about system dynamics, I'm gonna start with a really basic introduction to what system dynamics is. Okay, so this is a type of simulation, a computer simulation model. Um, the models themselves have building blocks. Um, you can see in the top right hand corner a little diagram of a very, very simple system dynamics model. The boxes in that um, represent places where patients or people can accumulate. Um, these are called stocks. Um, into and out of that stock, are flows. It's a bit like a bathtub. The level in that box is determined by the rate in and the rate out. And those flows have got other variables which might influence them. It might be length of stay, it might be capacity. Um, and those auxiliary variables um, are, could be explanatory or, or other factors that influence the model. And those are your basic building blocks of system dynamics. Easy, right, from there? Okay. <laughs> These models, um, they, they model the behavior of complex and interconnected systems, um, and they look at the behavior over time. So these aren't static. We're looking at the flow through these models. And within these models, the, the patients or the, the people or whatever entity you're having flowing through your model is considered as a continuous aggregate of flow. It, within these models, you can, you can make them quite complex, so you can have feedback loops, um, you can look at the different interactions between the factors over time, and that means that you can model these complex um, systems in a way that you couldn't in a, in a spreadsheet or other forms of modeling, it's not entirely linear. The structure within that model determines the behavior um, of the system. So the separate components interact and they affect each other um, and that determines the system as a whole. So what you do over here might have consequences over here later in time. Um, and that's where uh, these models can give insight. Um, the little graphic there is just a bit of a very, very basic interface. Don't judge me on that. That was a training exercise we did with some of our cohort, but you can see by changing the number of referrals or the service capacity, you can make them very easy to interact with. Okay. So why are we thinking about using system dynamics, and particularly in an ICS context, was, was what we were thinking about. It's because the, the ICSs at the moment are transitioning through a time of, of both challenge and opportunity. Um, they have to move from thinking about single organizations to thinking as their system as a whole, about how demand and capacity um, across that whole system um, interacts and how to plan for that for the future. Simulation is a, is a learning tool, so it helps the, the users gain insight. It improves the collective understanding of how a particular system works through engagement, through learning from the model, through that interaction the stakeholders have themselves between each other. Because they can be built in a participative way where we bring a mixed group of stakeholders together and they collaborate 
to create the structure of the model, and during those discussions, actually, they learn more about each other and the challenges that they face. And through the model, they can gain insight into the, the main constraints in the system, the dynamic impacts, current challenges, maybe where there are shortages, what are the implications of uh, prevention or future policies um, on what might happen. And it's quite a visual um, tool to interact with, so you do get the benefits of that sort of engagement and discussion. And they give this insight into the system behavior over time under a range of what-if scenarios in a, in a safe environment where people can play with, well, what happens if we do this? They, they can give a wider system view, so they incorporate from everywhere from the population demography all the way through, including population health needs, into services and out the other side into care. So it gives us the opportunity to take a system view um, to our long-term and medium-term strategic planning, and, and it helps us make more evidence-based decisions about future reallocation of capacity or what capacity gaps might look like. Um, you can use it for workforce planning as well. So let's talk about, so, so seeing that, we, we looked at the Midlands Decision Support Network, which is the coming together of the ICSs in the Midlands, whose, whose primary aim is to have intelligence-led decisions. And our aim was to build capability in the region to aid that. So there's a number of, of programs and learning opportunities through that network that the strategy unit helps coordinate. And one of the, the programs of work we wanted to do was around system dynamics. But we decided that doing a single afternoon's workshop was not enough to take an analyst from being an analyst who works on reporting, for example, to doing this sort of modeling. You have to have a bit of a change of mindset from answering the questions that are being asked of you to turning the questions around and asking the, the managers and the clinicians and the operations staff more about what they do, why they want to know the answer and understanding the implications of that. So it's, it takes more than um, somebody coming to you with a single question. And so we decided what we needed was a, a program, a, a learning program that an applied learning program, not one that was just about learning to use a piece of software in an afternoon. And so what we did was we brought together funding from a range of sources, from the Midlands Decision Support Network, from Midlands and Lancashire CSU, uh, from NHS England and colleagues in the demand and capacity team, and um, created this program um, for applied learning with the aim of, of building that capability in the Midlands. And we recruited, um, in the end, 12 participants from across the Midlands. Um, they were nominated by their intelligence function leads. Um, but not only that, they had to come with their system suggesting a project that they would work on and a project champion. Um, and that's how we decided who we would take on to the course was based on, on, on those projects and whether they had the, the right sort of things lined up. Um, what we were suggesting was quite a significant commitment. So we were talking six months of half day sessions um, and also time outside of those sessions to work on your project. So we estimated sort of 20 to 30 days depending on the complexity of their project. Um, so it was a big commitment. And this whole program was delivered 100% virtually. We never met in a room together. Um, and our aims were to not only teach them about system dynamics, teach them how to do system dynamics in a piece of software, um, but to try and develop models that would address the specific questions those organizations had. And maybe in the future, develop a community of practice around system dynamics in the region. 
Um, so those that know me know that I usually do discrete event simulation. <laughs> um, and I've touched on system dynamics, but I am not um, as much of an expert as some people we knew. So uh, Douglas McKelvey literally wrote the textbook on it. Uh, dynamics of care, if you've, if you've ever come across it. Um, very good book. Um, wrote with his colleague, Professor Walston Home. Um, so I'd been working on other projects with Douglas, including uh, a system dynamics model of domiciliary care. Um, and so we brought Douglas in to help with the teaching um, with myself and another simulation analyst um, supporting and running a couple of the sessions and, and facilitating those sessions. And the program ran from September to April. You've got a little timeline flashing up there. I'm not going to go through the exact details of what we did month by month, but it gives you an idea that we built up from something very basic from a single stock model in the first session over time into something more complex through a range of case studies. And um, we had a range of external speakers who came in, including Professor Walston Holm and Taylor Tako from Loughborough University and Stephen uh, Wyatt to talk to us about problem structuring. So we brought in other wider uh, techniques that they would need, including facilitation. We also went to some of the events led by the NHS England Demand and Capacity Team, uh, presented at a couple of those as well on some of the models we've been working on. And as it progressed, we switched more to supporting those analysts on their own projects. Uh, and we used wide use of uh, future NHS workspace, uh, particularly for videos for people to catch up. So some project examples. There was a whole range of projects that people worked on. I won't go through to them in, in too much detail because um, it would be really nice if those analysts were here to present them um, themselves. But one in particular was Shropshire Council's social care team, um, two of the analysts from there produced a model that looked at future care home requirements for the future, including demographics and um, the, the need for care home places in the future based on planning applications. So some reflections. Um, it was, uh, we had good feedback from the participants. There are things that we've learned, I think, through doing it that if we did it again, we would probably change. Definitely our advice to people is to start small and build those skills as we go, because it is a big leap um, into doing really complex models, and you need to understand the basics first. Um, and there were some capacity issues, so some of the participants uh, had to catch up with the videos. We did only lose one along the way who had to pull out because of capacity issues elsewhere. Um, the others managed to, to get through to the end of the course. Um, so, what next? So this is my uh, final slide, you'll be happy to know. Um, very different talk, no analytics in it ac exactly. Um, so we've presented some of the results. Then the analysts that were on the course presented at the Midlands Analyst Huddle. We took over a couple of those sessions and they presented their projects. Um, we are forming a Midlands Simulation Special Interest Group starting with System Dynamics, but we might widen out from there if there's demand for that. But uh, initially to support our cohorts. So this year, we haven't got the funding to run that same training over again, but what we want to do is support those analysts further so that they can carry on developing their models, creating new models, and invite anyone else in the region who's working on system dynamics to join us. Um, we're going to be having, uh, we, we do already have monthly catch-up sessions where we come and we talk and we discuss each other's work, share I, our, our models and get advice from our peers, but there's also some more advanced support in terms of one-to-one -one support on people's models and in terms of some advanced sessions on modeling as well that we're planning. Um, and we're looking at the, the potential of progressing some of those projects to region-wide. Okay, that's a model for this organization. How transferable is that? What do we need to do to make it applicable elsewhere? Um, we were working very closely with NHS England's demand and capacity team. And uh, as such, um, we have hopes that there will be a, a national community of practice. Um, obviously, things at NHS England are a little bit 
up in the air at the moment, but we would very much like to hear from you in terms of what you would like to see from this in the future, what support can be given, um, and, and what could you contribute towards that? Thank you.